We are Third Law Dance Theater, and you're watching In Focus. Welcome to In Focus with Eden Lane. Hi, I'm Eden Lane. Thanks for joining us on In Focus. This week we're in Boulder at the Dairy Center for the Arts, just in advance of Boulder Arts Week. It's the very first time they're doing it, and it's our first visit with Third Law Dance Theater. We'll find out about the company, meet the dancers, and get a peek of rehearsal for their premiere at Boulder Arts Week. Upton at Pearl is a special collaboration with the Boulder Bach Festival featuring Zachary Carrington. We begin our visit with Third Law Dance Theater at rehearsal with the co-artistic directors. Well, thank you for inviting us to come and learn more about Third Law Dance Theater and sort of have us in for a special rehearsal. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a unique thing to be able to get in in advance for a, a concert that has such a, a short window of opportunity to see it. And I know it was hard work to do, so thank you for that. But before we get into what's happening this month to kick off Boulder Arts Week at the Dairy, tell me about Third Law Dance Theater. How did, how did you begin this dance company? Did it start here in Boulder? Y yes, and you might ask, why is it called Third Law? Well, we might get, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Third law is Newton's third law. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction because that's what dancers do. They give and take weight from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and we founded it in Boulder on the first day of the new millennium, 01, 01, 01. Oh, wow. And we've been around there for 13 years. We just had our 13th anniversary. And uh, we met each other here and, and married here. And uh, we both had different kinds of dance backgrounds. Katie is a trained contemporary dancer from the University of Utah. And I'm actually a traditional dancer, folk dancer, and dance ethnologist. And so we thought that would be an interesting combination to have, and it's turned out that way. What was it about the creative environment that made you feel as if we needed another dance company at the beginning of the millennium here in Boulder? I don't know if I felt like we needed another one. I just, this, this is what I have to do. This is That's what you have to do. This is mm -hmm. my kind of mission in life. It's your mission in life. <laughs> I like that. Yes. A lot of artists talk about they do the work that they do because they can't not mm -hmm. do the work they do. And to have a company of artists in a fairly isolated area like Boulder, I mean, Boulder is, is rich, but it, it's removed from so much of what else goes on, yeah. mostly located in Denver. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we, do know, we, we have done many things in Denver. We were at the Denver Center last year at Off Center at the Jones. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have performed at the Newman Center in the, in the theater in the round. So we do, we do move out of uh, Boulder when, when we can and try to develop a new audience, a mm -hmm. bigger audience in Denver that appreciates the kind of thing we do. I'm involved in it because in the traditional world, uh, people are much more involved with ritual and involved with, you know, with, with feeling. And my goal was I wanted to have a company that, that created transformative emotion in the audience and made them feel that what, what we were feeling as artists in doing our work. And so it's a little bit different perhaps from some other people who do mostly movement or, or whatever, so. But it's definitely a Boulder-based organization. It is Boulder-based, oh, yes. but one of the things that kind of stretches beyond our bubble a little bit is that it's not just about the work the company is doing, it's the classes that we offer also. We've created this beautiful community around the classes that kind of feeds into the energy mm -hmm. of the company. And so in that way, I, you know, I feel like we've created this community that kind of reaches beyond just what we're putting on stage. So. And this is our home. This is our base. The Dairy uh, Center. We, we, yeah. we debut. We are a resident organization at the Dairy. Uh, we have debuted most of our works here especially all the major works, and we are uh, doing things that try to foster also the dairy as a cultural center. And we feel we can contribute to that by the artwork we do here, even if we do go and do things outside. What an amazing place to be an artist in a, in a facility like the dairy or mm -hmm. the Denver Center or the yeah. Arvada mm -hmm. Center, in that there are so many disciplines housed right. in one 
one right. roof, really. Right. That, that's one of the very intriguing things about being here, because you can walk down the hall and hear a, you know, a, a piano lesson going on or another dance class. Sometimes there's three to four dance classes going on at the same time, which is from different organizations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we, and we collaborate with other, mostly SCFD organizations in Boulder. One of our major works, Till We Wake, involved Phil Sneed, who mm -hmm. I think you also know, who has now moved to the Arvada Center. But he, he was an actor and worked on stage with us. And we also have worked with musicians and electronic media artists that helps broaden our work to a number of multimedial art, 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 art uh, art projects. And not always just with other tier threes, but other well, kinds of organizations. Dam is tier one and the Denver Center is tier one. Yes, we try to we try to go upscale. <laughs> 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 now tell me about the philosophy of Third Law Dance Theater. What is the artistic statement? What is your philosophy of the work that you're doing? Or do you have one overarching philosophy of your work? Um, well I think one thing would be that um, there's always a, some kind of conceptual base to the pieces. So that's the thing that comes first. And then we build from that concept out. So it's not like I go and create choreography and then place the concept on top of that. Mm -hmm. do, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. So the concept isn't, when you say a conceptual, it's not this movement phrase, that's what we're exploring. It's something larger or? Yes. yes. So it starts with an idea and then the movement comes from that. And, and our, our ideas come from issues of concern to not just this community, but the community in general. One piece we did, Lost in Place, was stimulated by the thought of what is emigration like? You know, we, we, it's a big concern in the country these days. And we thought, well, you know, we don't do polemics. So we don't go out there. And so what we thought, what does that mean? It means loss of sense of place. Mm -hmm. And our concert was built around the idea of loss of sense of place. And Katie transferred that into movement. And we had video and we, have, you know, we had some text and things of that nature to sort of bring this idea out and tell the community this is something you need to think about. That's part of what we do. The idea is we want to, I don't know what the right word is, enlighten or make aware of the community that, that these issues exist and that we transform them into art. Good artworks, that's our, sort of our mission. Through dance theater works to make the community aware of central issues that are important to them. When you say artwork, what, when you say art, particularly when it pertains to dance mm -hmm. and the work that Third Law Dance Theater is doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does that word mean? Well, I think especially now we're really coming more from an intermedial perspective and so the reason I like to say artwork is because it's not always just dance. Mm -hmm. It's not always um, going to be on in this environment. Sometimes it, we do site-specific uh, pieces that uh, includes the environment that we're working in. Um, but just recently we did a performance that the whole choreographic process started with blind contour drawings. What are blind contour drawings? Blind contour drawings, yeah. let's see if I can get this right, is um, you uh, uh, say we're drawing our hand. Mm -hmm. um, you are drawing without looking at the object and you're just drawing the outside line. So what that does is it takes the judgment away from what you're producing over here mm -hmm. because it's a task-oriented um, idea. A technique very, very familiar to visual artists. Right, they use it as a warm-up tool for eye-hand coordination but also um, to remove the judgment so that you are working on a task, not trying to pr produce a product that um, maybe not is not authentic to the process. So you're not editing it as you're You're not creating. editing it, exactly. And then the dancers took what Katie gave them. I mean, we are a dance-centered group. Yeah, of uh, course. They took what Katie <laughs> gave them from this process, and they all engaged in it. They all drew their hands, and they all did the work, and then they, they were able to create movement from that, three-dimensional movement mm. from this long, it looks like a hieroglyphic scroll. I took all of the hands and I, I put them together all in one line, and that became our choreographic map. Our so score. that could have been literally the path of movement yes, it or became, yes. the carriage of the yes. body. Or yes. yes, they traveled, the point of the line became a point that traveled through their body. Mm. So, and in a lot of ways it was this beautiful um, connection to them personally because they're 
accessing different things from an internal and place. And it was their hand. It was their yeah. hand, <laughs> yes. And, and we did that in three different environments. It, a, little, a little bit different each one. We did it at the American Dance Festival in Durham over the summer. Mm -hmm. And in December, we did it at Pamoka because it, had, it was a bigger room. It was, we, we tried not to do that in the theater space. So we did that piece there, and we'll probably do another version next year. But that's specific to the site with this particular method of choreographing. So they're also different from the more thematic works. Yeah. So clearly this was um, a seminal work for you, even it, mm. for, at, it was at, really third law dance. Yeah, and it was really reaching towards a new process mm. of finding movement for me. I, you know, I do my own movement all the time. I want to see what their movement, what is, their movement is and what my movement brings out of them and vice versa. So um, it was a way for me to personally connect with the dancers and also to connect to a larger audience because they brought in hand drawings of people they admired and also family members. So it connected them to their history and to us and, mm. and it was a way to find new movement. What other kinds of things have changed along the 13 seasons you've already had at Third Law Dance yeah. Theater well, that, that have really changed your focus in this way? Because uh, clearly no, no organization stays the same as right. when it starts. Yes, when we started we, we had dancers and lights. <laughs> and, and a few years ago we, 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 became, we came to collaborate with an electronic media artist, Darwin Gross, who is our principal collaborator, who works with me in the digital media program at the University of Denver. And he introduced a whole other process of, of real-time manipulation of live cinema. Mm. So it wasn't a movie. I was down here in the front of this theater with a the camera feeding him and he manipulated it with these wonderful techniques he had developed. That was new for us. So the uh, projected image actually became a live in image because it was being created, created by in the, the moment. moment. In the moment. Yeah, and that's moment. important for us because so many people these days, you know, the digital media revolution has to do with visual things on, uh, on, uh, uh, on the computer. And we firmly believe that live art, where you can get sweat in your face from the dancer <laughs> on the stage. Uh, that's a charming notion. <laughs> and and, and, and art is like that. Art can sometimes be, be, be rather <laughs> yep. uh, snarky. So, or, so, or, or messy. Well, messy. Messy, messy yeah. that's a good word. Messy. <laughs> yeah, Stark, you might not be right. <laughs> <laughs> messy would be a good word. And, and, and people need to see that. And they need to know that the next night's performance is not going to be this night's performance. That's right. They change every night. It's live, theater, or dance, and it's different. And the way you react to them as audience members, because it is interactive, mm -hmm. it is a communicative mode, is going to be different. And we love that idea. That is that part of the reason you chose to have the word theater? in the name of yes. your company? Is that part yes. of that philosophy? Yes. yes. Well, and it also gives us the option to, sometimes we do use text in our concerts. We haven't recently, but mm -hmm. it, it allows us that option. <laughs> Phil Sneed recited the entire text to the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock right. on this stage f for the piece Till We Wake. Yeah. And it was wonderful. He, he, uh, he, 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 live voice also adds a lot to yeah. our work. We, we, we need to go farther with that. We haven't done a, enough of that yet. And it, it really works well with dance in that we're hearing, especially when we're experiencing dance live, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're hearing the dancer's breath. Yes. We're hearing their rhythm. We're hearing their effort. They're absolutely. landing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Maybe that's better than perspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Perspiration is important too. Yes. <laughs> but yes, you, it is you hear athletic. sounds. You hear people, people make grunt and they, you hear them <laughs> thump on the stage. Uh, Hopefully only when it's yeah, intentional. Yeah, when you want Only to. when it's intentional, <laughs> right. right. The work that's coming up that, that is part of the kickoff to the first mm -hmm. Boulder Arts Week, week. Yes. which is amazing yeah. that, that, that it's the first one. Who knew we didn't have one, but so glad we're getting yes. one. Yes. yes. Maybe I'll take Boulder out of that bubble a little bit. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and help people who live here appreciate what's happening in our own backyard mm -hmm. in a way that we might not always mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do. And your, your concert this time around is a very unique collaboration. Tell me about how this particular piece began. It, well, um, we, there are other organizations in town, as we, we spoke about, that are doing various kinds of musical or artwork and, and we know these people mm -hmm. and one day uh, the director Marsha uh, uh, came to us and said uh, 
it would be, uh, she wanted to feature Zachary Curriton, their new musical director, who's a wonderful violinist, and thought perhaps we could intersect with a, with a collaborative work in dance and, 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 and mostly Bach. And it's, it won't be him playing on the side. He'll be in the middle of the stage with the dancers interacting with them. And it just grew from that over the last four or five months. Mm. And I think they were really looking also for a way to bring a classical form into a contemporary environment. And so uh, bringing this together is... Bach with a contemporary mm -hmm. dance company. Mm -hmm. yes. On our card we said bringing the 17th century into the modern era. Yeah. Because that's an important part of Zachary's view of Bach that is not dead. It's not. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he plays in a very uh, you know, independent way. And maybe, Passionate. in some ways, reminding those who already access contemporary dance, yes. reminding them of where that kind of art springs yes, from. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bach was, <laughs> in his time, on the, you know, cutting edge. pop music. Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. Right, right. Yeah. He, he, he was he the was Jimi Hendrix of his era. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently, he had a sharp elbows. Sharp elbows. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so Zachary has been working on this for years, his interpretations of, of uh, uh, Baroque music. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we thought this would be an excellent example of a collaboration, which could work or fail. That's the genius of this live work. You know, it yeah. could. But it's not about that. It's about the work itself yeah. that's yeah. happening, the relationship in the collaboration, and the relationship that he's going to create with the dancers on stage. And that's how we're posing it, is that the audience is not a spectator in this. They are witnessing mm -hmm. a relationship happening. And that's what's so being fascinating created, to me. Being created. And creating. contributing yes. to the relationship yes. by yes. the fact of their being mm -hmm. in that space and mm -hmm. how they react that's to right. that work. Right. So it really can't fail. Uh, yes, in, in, in our sense it can't. <laughs> right. We'll see how the critics... <laughs> Well, something, something tells me that for our first Boulder Arts Week, yes. that the critics and the audiences both are going to be so excited to see it born yeah. yes. that um, it, it already has succeeded. Yes, I think, yeah. I think it will be a big success. We all think that it will be a success. I really appreciate this chance, not just to learn about what you're doing for the first Boulder Arts Week, but to learn more about Third Law Dance Theater and make our first visit with your company. Thank you very much. We are so Thank thankful. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll have more highlights from a rehearsal as a web extra, but now we turn to my visit with the company of dancers from Third Law Dance Theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for letting us come into rehearsal today, a special extra rehearsal during a snowy day here in Boulder. I really appreciate you letting us get this advanced glimpse of the work you're doing at Third Law. Thanks so much. What is it like for you as artists to have a company like Third Law with which to work right here in Boulder? It's a particularly unique experience because the work that they do is really compelling. They really focus on a lot of full evening length pieces with a really in-depth exploration of a subject matter, mm -hmm. which is not something you run into a whole lot in the contemporary dance field, which is a really exciting thing to be a part of. And on top of that, they give a lot of unique experiences they treat us really well and they do their best to compensate us for our time and make our time feel like it's really well valued which is once again uh, not something you run into with every company you dance with so especially just, not in a major metropolitan center boulder is fairly small in the dance world are any of you experiencing your first time in a dance company is this your first time being in a dance company yeah it, yeah it is yeah uh, i graduated from college in 2011 and I moved here and um, that was a big move but um, it where did was, you graduate uh, Florida State University that is a big move yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um, and pretty much you know I always said like the only thing I want in a company is like to feel the work is fulfilling and mm -hmm. for me that's more than just pretty dance moves um, while I like those too mm -hmm. um, just having more, like what Mason was saying, behind the work, um, and you know whether or not the audience always knows the whole process or the whole story, whatever. But no, like you can tell when you see work that um, that there's more behind it, and that it's well researched, and it's coming from the movement is coming from a place other than just 
hey, let's put my elbow there and do this or whatever. It's not abstract and it's not narrative, but right. we don't Somewhere necessarily have to know. Right, exactly. Yeah, and so that's what I enjoy doing. So it was nice that they were here, so I found them. Yeah. Who, who among you, because this is only part of the company, who among you have been with Third Law the longest? Uh, we've all taken bits of break and come back, it seems like. No, um, but I think nope, it's me. She, yeah. <laughs> the longest, like, but only by like a month. I think Michelle and Molly followed me like within a month. Um, two, August of 2009. So that's, when that's I started. a healthy investment mm -hmm. to stay with a company that long. What is, what is it about the work you're doing at Third Law that keeps you either here the whole time or keeps you coming back that long? For me, it's I, I'm actually scared to leave because I don't feel like I can find this even if I were to move to a different coast because it's such a nurturing environment, one. Um, she lets us be a true artist and take it, her movement, and make it our own without any sort of attachment to it. She lets it, lets us carry it. Um, but also, uh, it's so um, rich, and every show you have to do something totally and completely different, and one is dancing on chairs in fabulous red dresses, and another one is, you know, very passionate um, and emotional, and it, to blind contour drawings. I mean, it's all just very varied, and it has a very theatrical base, um, which as a artist in itself, not just dancer, is very nice to have. Mm -hmm. How about for you? What is it that keeps you engaged um, so long because it's not easy to be a dancer anywhere and it's certainly not easy to be a dancer in the suburbs <laughs> or in a college town. I think for me um, dance is it's an outlet of three different things it's a social outlet for me and an emotional outlet and a physical outlet. When you say it's a physical and an emotional outlet we clearly get that when we watch you. When you say it's a social outlet, what do you mean when you say that? I love these guys. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Kate. Yeah. It's fun. I know, we have a good time. It's a uniquely congenial atmosphere for a dance company. Mm -hmm. there's, not a, there's not a sense of, in a traditional classical ballet company, there's a very structured hierarchy and maybe even some competition to, mm -hmm. and that's not here. It's a group working towards a goal, mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. to make something together. There is yeah. zero drama. Like, somebody asks what they love most about a company, like, that's my, yeah. zero drama. Zero drama. Zero. And I think we're really lucky, and I, and I think right. I speak for everybody by saying, um, when we watch each other dance, we're like, ooh, I love the way she does that. I love the way he does that. Man, I'm gonna try and do it more like that person. So it's it's um, an, an air of respect rather than an air of competition. And yeah. that's also really difficult to find in a company. How so. do you describe the, the work that you're doing here? How do you describe your place in the work that you do here? Well, I think Katie really, as Michelle said, treats us as artists. And so you really feel like you have an investment and a part of the work is yours as well as hers and I you know saw a lot of her shows before I became a company member and I've always thought her work is just stunning I think she has a great visual sense and um, the movement is always gorgeous but from a like design and a visual art perspective mm -hmm. I think the work is always very complex but in the right ways and she makes really great choices and so it's just an honor to be part of that and to really like feel that what you're putting out is always going to be of the highest quality. Yeah. I can tell from each of you talking about your work here at Third Law that it is more than just dancing. There is this emotional collegial connection that you have and, and that's really special because you don't always see that with artists as a, as a collective. If you were going to pick one word or a phrase that describes Third Law as a dance company, as an arts organization, as a place for community for yourselves as artists. What would that be? I would say welcoming. Mm. And I would say joy. I would say thoughtful. Thoughtful. For me, it's Gandhi's saying, be the change you want to see in the world. Because mm. every topic they choose 
for an evening length work is a topic they feel very strongly about and they want to say something about it. And and then you get to say something. And about I get it too. to say something about it, but it also carries over in class. Katie is very one who is constantly growing as a person and she brings that into the class and we embrace her and we she embraces us and it's a collaboration just in class even. Yeah. Mason? Well, we, we have a bit of a background with this word in this company, so I have to use it very carefully, but authentic. <laughs> and I mean it in, in, with no irony, because I know that word gets thrown around a lot. And I think it does, because, doesn't it? It does, and I, I think it's because they come with such a unique, a unique pairing, the co-artistic directorship that they've created. It really creates such a unique, authentic experience, both within the work and within the rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. So I have to use it with caveat, but <laughs> yeah. authentic. Is there a word or phrase that really speaks to how you would describe this work, this relationship, this family? Um, for me, it's it's very it's exciting. I look forward to coming here. Um, I would describe the like the movement. I feel is very athletic, mm. um, fun. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed getting to see a glimpse of this concert that's going to kick off Boulder Arts Week, really. And I appreciate you coming in on a snowy day mm -hmm. to give us that glimpse. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Here's another glimpse from rehearsal. video highlights from rehearsal will be available online at infocustv.org. Obstinate Pearl will kick off Boulder Arts Week at the Dairy Center. There's only one weekend for your chance to see this brand new work by Third Law Dance Theater as part of Boulder Arts Week. More information is available on their webpage, thirdlaw.org. Remember to join us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Good night. Snugglebug.